Hey everybody, welcome. Just working on this little fun animation right here. And sometimes when you're in the screen, uh, you can't see everything, it's kind of annoying. So here's a couple of quick tips. You can just hit control space bar with the mouse over here in this area and maximize this area. Then just hit control space bar to go back. Now, if for some reason I wanted to maximize my timeline, which potentially could be something better like a geometry nose editor I can come down here and hit control space bar and then I've got the geometry nodes workspace ready to go and of course if I have something selected then you'll be able to go down into this area and maximize that nice and quick and then see what you're doing now also if you're in uh, this mode here just in the regular screen you can hit control alt space bar and then get a nice full screen. It's kind of like hitting the forward slash. So I'm just going to control alt space bar and go back. Now, if I just wanted to see my plane only, I can hit the forward slash button and it's going to isolate it. You see that the uh, viewport performance definitely increased, which is nice. Now, let's just say that you are working with something and you end up kind of zoomed out, if you will, and maybe you can't quite see your mesh anymore, and we'll just kind of get something in here. Let's get a UV sphere, and I'll scale that bad boy up to something ridiculous. And for whatever reason, I just, I'm not in the zone where I can see it. The viewport's not able to read it. All you have to do is come over here to the end panel tab and click view, and then you've got a clip start my uh, camera locked to view so I couldn't see what I was doing there but anyway something like around 3,000 or whatever and you could bring it up you could try 10,000 to begin and then you'll have the clip start and if you kind of bring the clip start up and down you'll see how this reacts so you can get a better view of things when you're zoomed out and now there's a couple of other things we can do here like go into edit and preferences and go to interface and then the resolution scale that's going to control the scale of everything and blender always likes everything at one but you can put this very easily to something like 1.2 and bring up everything if you're ever having trouble seeing what's going on or you really want to make something go onto a much larger screen like 0.8 it's really nice and you can do that that also looks pretty good too and it might hurt your eyes if you can't see good but uh I think I'll just go ahead and put mine to 1.2. It's kind of straight in my eyes, and that's kind of helpful. And there's just a few tips for you guys. Now, I haven't used this one in a while, but if you happen to be really far out, you can have one piece of your mesh selected, or you know maybe you got out of view. You can just select anything you want, like the point light. I'll just grab a piece of my sphere. View menu here, so you can actually, yep, number pad period and I'm just using the laptop today so I don't have that so I can actually add that to the quick favorites and then just hit Q to frame it so if I was out here and had something selected I can just frame uh, kind of frame up on that and here's another really cool one if you don't know how to do this you can create a clipping area and you could take up an orthographic view or perspective it doesn't really matter just for the fun of it I'll do perspective view and you hit Alt B and that's going to bring up your box select, but this is a little bit different. So if I select this, anything inside my clipping region, I'll be able to see directly inside the mesh. And you can see my uh, cracks cutter inside of there, which is actually kind of funny. And so anything I move in or out of the clipping region will do so. And then Alt B will get rid of that, which is really cool. So I'll go over to the rendered view and here if i have a lot of stuff in the scene which i really don't at the moment but you can hit control b okay and once you've hit control b you'll have another box select and i can just bring up a selection region here and it'll just render what is actually inside of this area so if i had another mesh outside of that I'll scale the bad boy up a little bit. There we go. Helps if I move over to cycles. Uh, then you'll see this is not being rendered until it is moved into the render region, which will really save you 
a lot of resources. And then control B will allow you to kind of change that if you just want to uh, focus on a different area. Maybe you only want to focus on one very small area and work on it. And then very simply control alt B will clear all that out and you go back to normal view. And while we're in the view menu, kind of looking around at all the different things in here, and I encourage you to go in and kind of figure this out and add some certain things into your Q menu if you want. And what we can do is hit control alt Q and this is gonna bring up your quad view. So it's automatically gonna bring you a top, a left, a right, and a perspective, okay? so. This would be very powerful for you to be able to kind of like see what is actually going on from a lot of different angles. And as you can see, this is a bottom, well, not quite a, a bottom piece, but you'll see right here, this is the right orthographic, the front, the top, and then the user perspective. Very useful. And then control alt Q, we'll clear that out. And we'll finish this off because this is more of a quick view tutorial with geometry nodes all right and i'm going to add a geometry node setup here real quick i'll put a little join geometry in here i distribute points and i want to instance on points i'm going to tag in the og geometry so it comes back and then we can throw in something very simple here I guess we can't get a Suzanne that way. Sorry, right, I'll just do a UV sphere, not unwrap. And I want to bring the radius down, 0 0.05 should be good. Then I can instance this. Now, in the view menu here, you'll have the viewer node. Let me turn that on if you don't already have it. It should just be defaulted on in the later uh, versions of Blender, like 3.6 and up. And this is really easy to do. This is a simple setup of buttons of control shift and left click. So if I want, I can control shift and left click and I'm going to get a viewer node that is attached and I'll be able to see the geometry that is being projected here. If I want to look at the distribute points, I can see just the points. This is very good for debugging. And if I want to see the instances, I can see that. Of course, the joint geometry and then just to get rid of this, if you don't want to see this anymore, you can delete that thing out of there. Now, one of those things we can do just for the fun of it, because I think it's fun to see this. I'm going to throw in a set position node right here. Kind of cross it down so I have a little bit of room. And for my offset, I'm just going to throw in a noise texture. I'll bring the scale down to 0.5-ish. And then I want to get a vector math node and I'm going to drop that in and do the basic subtract so we can make it look right. And I'm going to subtract 0.5 and that's going to kind of put everything back where it should be. And so could add a little bit of distortion to this. Now here's the cool thing. And one more thing actually we could do just for the fun of it. Let me just move these off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and make this a wireframe. So it's a mesh to curve, curve to mesh. That way you kind of see this a little bit better. This is a little bit more fun. I'll do a curved circle as well. And this radius would be 0 0.005. More than likely that'll be more than enough. Yep, I like how that looks. Now from here, once you do this, you can grab the noise texture with control shift left click and you can not see anything. All right, we'll go to the curve to mesh. Here we go. So now you can just see what is actually being projected here and then the set position. That's taking the noise texture, so that's fields. You're not necessarily gonna see all that. You can see the result of the noise texture as it goes, which is pretty well seen um, with the viewer node here. And then when you're done, just delete that bad boy out, and then you've got what you've got. But anyways, that's it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Just a quick video with a few things that probably you should know by now. But if you don't, these things are really going to help you out. Uh, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.